Hello YouTube, CyberDoc here. Today um, I'm going to do a repair on uh, this FPC connector for iPad, uh, sorry, iPod Touch 4th generation. So this is the LCD connector. It has dirty pins. Actually, yeah, it has dirty pins for the no, 20, sorry, my bad. I think this is this is 26 pins. Either way. 26 pin LCD connector for iPod Touch 4th generation. Uh, it was sending for repair due to the, as you can see, the connector has some damage. So, as always, I put in some um, high quality, this is the white color, no clean solder paste. And some CyberDoc alloy, or We've been calling it a quick alloy. And now I am using a soldering iron to desolder the pins with the CyberDoc alloy. So what I'm doing now is really just using the flux and this low temperature melting alloy which melts at um, 58, 57 degrees Celsius. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing the low melting alloy with the residual original solder, left free solder used by Apple which melts around 25, 27 degrees Celsius. So my iron's a little bit above 300 degrees Celsius. Actually I think I might have used like maybe 350 or uh, 400 degrees Celsius just to speed things up. So if you want to be safe you can keep your iron. I I'll use uh, uh, at least 400 I think but 300 is the safest so as you can see once you um, melted the the solder the temperature has to be hot, hot enough to melt the solder on board and the low melting alloy cyberdog alloy comes out once it's mixed with the residual like original alloy sorry original solder um, it, the connector comes out very easily and to remove this blob of alloy, it's very simple. You just heat it up and you will come off like a, a viscous soluble. You can pick it up once it, it cools down. And you can also pick it up piece by piece. You don't want to do it all in one blob. You can, one, during its cooling, it's going to get uh, crystallized and you can pick it up like little by little. I think I lost my patience with this solder bowl, so um, here I'm using a solder wick to pick up the solder bowl. Um, if you're short on this alloy, um, CyberDog alloy, again you can get this from my website down below the description. If you're short on this alloy, you can recycle it. All you have to do is just, you know, take it up take it out like such in a little blob and use it for another day for desoldering. After all it's really just just like regular solder it's just a metal alloy it can be reused however many times as long as you can clean the uh, the connector or whatever part that you are mixing it with. A little technical difficulty. So um, the camera seems to be off angle. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just review what I was using. I, so I used a regular solder iron, a uh, regular reward station soldering iron, and CyberDoc alloy or quick alloy, and some no clean solder paste. Um, the solder paste is no clean class because it has very low um, solder paste flux. Sorry, it's, just, it's the flux. It's no clean class. It has because it has very low uh, solid residue 
but it's still better if you clean it afterwards with uh, isopropyl alcohol because even with low solder residue it still makes the bowl sticky and I don't know it's just you know call me superstitious just clean the bowl whenever you can but you don't really have to like technically So now I'm just cleaning off, in the video, I'm just cleaning off uh, the pads. Okay, so what I put on here, it's a uh, low melting solder paste with, well, no clean flux. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the connectors with solder paste. You simply put the solder paste on the spot you want to no, you know, tin the, con the solder pads. And then you just heat out the solder. Uh, oh, by the way, this, uh, like I said before, this is the 138, 37 degrees Celsius low melting temperature solder paste from Cyberdoc. So it melts at relatively low temperature. Like I said before, uh, regular solder apple use, which is left free, it melts at uh, 300, sorry, 230, well, 40 to 270 degrees Celsius, give or take. This alloy I just put on, it melts at 138 degrees Celsius. Uh, the reason I do this is because it will make my soldering back on a lot easier. And unlike the desoldering alloy I use, this alloy's melting temperature it's higher and also more importantly this alloy, the solder paste alloy I use has a higher shear stress value. Hence, it can handle abuse for connectors joints and its shear stress uh, this sh its resistance to shear stress or any kind of you know, uh, mechanical stress it's as almost as good as the regular leaded solder a little bit less but almost as good so now I'm cleaning off the board with a little bit um isopropyl alcohol and uh, sonic care toothbrush I mean, it's mm, probably easier just to brush it off than using uh, the real Sonic Air to brush because I every time I use that, I make such a mess with just isopropyl alcohol brushing everywhere due to the Sonic vibration from the toothbrush. Okay, so the next step is you can wait for the alcohol to dry out or put the no cling flux back on because this is the step that we want to solder on the connector. So now I'm putting on the solder paste. I keep calling it solder paste. Sorry. No clean solder flux. Here we go. Oh, uh, a little quick mentioning about this flux. It's designed to withstand high temperature. So it's it has as um well, it has organic carboxylic acid in it. So don't worry, it's, it's like fruit juice acid. It's not, it's not like acid acid, it's, it's weak acid. So it's not gonna corrode your board. Um, but it's enough, enough acid to activate the, I guess it prevents the oxidation when you do soldering on high temperature on the metal joints. Correct me if I'm wrong in the description, if you like. I mean, in the comments, if you like. But from what I understand, flux, the you need acid in it to to prevent oxidation and make uh, 
that it joins. Anyways, I digress. Um, so yeah, in this video right now, remember I put in the low melting alloy on it, the 138 degrees Celsius solder paste from QuickDock. So what I'm doing right now is all you need to do is just align this connector to its approximate location and heat the shit out of it with a, a higher gun. Just kidding. Okay, so the temperature, the sweet spot you want to hit, it's about 150 degrees Celsius. Because that's above 138 degrees Celsius. If you have a toaster oven or a solder oven with a temperature setting on, great, put this thing in. Or if you have a IR uh, dark field infrared lamp or real workstation, great, put the lamp on. Or if you're really cheap like me, kind of low budget on, well, low on rework stations. I actually have a, a heating lamp, but I'm too lazy to get it. But, uh, so yeah, if you, you, uh, you only have a hot air nozzle, hot air rework station, you can use the hot air. Set your hot air to less than 300 degrees Celsius if you have neighboring components. In this case, because this is a connector, you don't want to melt it. Uh, from my experience, the connectors start to, you know, start to deform and melt above maybe 250 degrees Celsius. So, because um, what happens is when Apple reflow these boards, everything on it needs to withstand at least 150, uh, 250 degrees Celsius. Some of the stuff melts at almost 300 degrees Celsius. So, Anything under 250, like actual temperature you're putting on the board, it will be fine. This plastic is not, not going to melt. Anything above that, this thing's going to deform. So to be safe, you can set your temperature uh, 210, 220, whatever, as long as you don't hit like over 250 actually on the board. Okay. Um, I guess some previous comment talk, talking about how I spent too much time fiddling with the um, this, the one I soldered. Well, I want to make some common remark to that. Well, this is kind of like my hobby. You know, I don't actually do this because I have to. I have other stuff going on. But So I'm enjoying doing this and especially when I'm making a tutorial video, I want people to actually see the solder being reflow, so I keep poking at it. Um, oh, so yeah, this is good to do. Um, use a soldering iron first to align the chip, the connector, the pins. The, you just need to like solder one pin. Well, in this case, I failed. Like it wasn't really soldered on. I just melted the pad. So what you want to do is you want to align this and solder one pin and keep it aligned before you blast it with the higher gun. Otherwise, this connector might fly out of alignment. So you do that. Careful though, you don't want to solder an iron to be too close to the plastic. It will melt it. But uh, in this case, I was being overly cautious. I really shouldn't have. Can you tell I don't do this every day? <laughs> yeah, it's very rare I get a connect like to sort of a FPC connector like this. That many pins. Okay, so as you see, like the first pin is being holding place. You just need to align approximately, and oh yes, hold down the connector. And now you just, you heat up the board.
Yeah, I, I was being way too cautious with my temperature setting. Um, I think I set it at 200 degrees Celsius. And not uh, waiting long enough so the alloy is not actually melting and pretty much just wasting time. I was too cautious about um, not melting the plastic, which I shouldn't have because the later on I find out this plastic is it's very hot to melt it. You need like almost 200 degrees Celsius to melt this plastic. So, yeah, don't do what I did. <laughs> well, do what I did, but you know, be more brave and more. Um, you have the knowledge now that you know. Be brave. Blaster of heat. Okay. Oh yeah. So another cool thing about flux that, especially when you use um, good flux, good no clean flux. That's the, that has a vaporization temperature or the boiling temperature around the melting point. So I think this flux has a vaporization temperature of 240 degrees Celsius or around there, 240, 250. Um, it's probably goes to 270. I'm not sure because I didn't make this flux myself. Um, it will protect, it's like, it's almost like cooking oil. Uh, when you cook something, you want to protect um, the components from overheat, right? You want to keep your food fresh. Well, not fresh, but you know, not overcooked. That's a better word. Not burned. You don't want your component burned. So what this median no clean flux does, another thing it does aside from preventing oxidation from the active acid component in it, well, Vegetable acid, or well, whatever it is, it's some kind of weak acid. Is to, um, sorry, I was talking about flux temperature. So it's to keep the temperature within the range that you want. So as you vaporizing the flux, it's gonna stay at uh, 240, 270 degree, give or take, temperature. So your component will not be damaged. It's like boiling a cup of water. It doesn't matter how much heat you put in, how much fire, you, how many hours you boil in the water, the water is gonna stay around 100 degrees Celsius. So yeah, after you secure the connector with hot air, um, in my case, you know, I'm paranoid. So after the hot air, you if you have a fine solder tip, soldering iron, you can poke at it one by one just to make sure every single connection is secure and it has solder melted from the solder pad to the connector. Um, it's a little bit tedious work, but just be careful don't make solder bridges. Um, if you do make solder bridges, if you have, and you just need a really fine tip soldering iron, you can easily break apart by putting the soldering iron in between and draw the uh, the solder from going outside. But as long as you don't, you didn't solder too much solder, it's not likely for you to form solder bridges. Another way to do this is heat up the alloy and use a needle, like a, literally a needle. It's, this pitch is very small. I think this pitch is like 0.3 millimeter distance apart. So a needle, once as long as the the solder it's molten, you can use a needle to drag in between to break the solder bridge. Or you can be very careful. You know, poke at it with a really fine soldering iron one by one. like what I'm doing here in the video under a microscope. I think I need a better microscope. Yeah, maybe. Okay, zoom in. Then there's a pin there, so just double check. A little bit LCD, I know. It's a good thing.
Okay, definitely OCD. <laughs> So now is the fun part. You get to claim the um, the connector. Well, you, cl you use isopropyl alcohol and clean off the flux. And there's some flux. The yellow stuff is the flux that got burned. So you just clean that gunk off and check your connections. I'm wiping it with like a tissue paper or cotton swab. Okay, hey, so now the microscope is focused. All connectors are being soldered. Good connections. And then you're done. So that's uh, my hands blocking it. So this is how you solder uh, iPod Touch fourth LCD connector, 26 pins with quick alloy, CyberDuck alloy. Again, everything used in this repair, including the LCD connector. CyberDoc alloy used and the uh, no cling flux. Also, the solder paste that I use in this video it's all available on my website cyberdocllc.com. Uh, the links in the video description. Also, I want to mention uh, my friend White. He has this. He made this wonderful collection of uh, iPhone and electronic repair library, I guess. Uh, I helped him create the site that he has a for he runs like a forum answer question Q and A based kind of support for um, people who have questions on uh, electronics on iPhone specifically and iPads, Apple product basically. Uh, it's called iPhoneBacklight.com. He is much far more knowledgeable than me at iPhone and iPad electronic components and circuits, how it runs and how it works. I often get a lot of help from him on advice and uh, repairs. So check him out. His website is uh, iPhoneBacklight.com. It's under the description link in this video and all my other videos. It's a paid membership website. So yeah, check him out. It, his name's White. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.